we're installing this alternator into this car. Alternators are great. They have a positive power terminal right on them. Makes it easy enough to connect all of your positive power wires, run through a fuse block, and to your batteries. Also, you can easily monitor voltage with any voltmeter. However, we want to monitor charge current. So, we're also installing the conductor from Spark Innovations. This is a ground distribution block and an ammeter. Now, I said ground distribution block. That's important because alternators do not have a ground terminal. Their bracket, their chassis is their ground. And this grounds through the car, through the mounting brackets, through the engine. So we are gonna use a ring terminal onto our ground wire and one of those mounting bolts will go right through it, giving us a ground wire that we can then run over to the conductor. Then we can run the wire back to the battery ground terminal. So our conductor is fully installed, all the wire run. Now over from the bracket on the alternator, we have our ground wires come over to the input side of the conductor. This is directional. Make sure your wire is capable of carrying all the current that the alternator can put out. On the output side, run to our batteries, we have multiple wires. This is because we're using it as a distribution block to run to multiple battery locations. Great if you want to tee off to a front battery and back batteries. If you need more spots, we also have lug style connectors or you can use a ring terminal. We also have a ground wire connected to the input lug of the conductor. This runs inside to the display, to the ground wire on the display, because this is a reference wire. This is the best reference you can get. Very important. There's also the data wire that goes to the display. This is how it reads. Run that inside to the display as well. The wires from the output of the conductor go to the ground terminals of the batteries. It's important that the batteries ground through the conductor and do not go to chassis ground anywhere else. Okay, until I fabricate a piece here, I'm just gonna lay it in the pocket, but we give you this aluminum plate so you can mount it to any flat surface. Now remember, the ground wire goes to the input lug of the base unit. Now the positive side is such low current, you can connect it directly to the remote turn on of a head unit, or in this case, through one of our switches and the RBX4CH relay box. So all I have to do is flip this switch and we have it on. Now, most people are not familiar with how the amperage will work in their vehicle. No worries, I'm here to explain. Right now, everything is off. Now remember, the bracket, the chassis ground is on the input side where the output side goes to our battery. So anything coming off the output side directly off that battery will show as positive current flow. But anything that's grounded to the chassis ground on the input side, this will actually show negative current flow and bring up a negative symbol. So when I turn the ignition on, all the vehicle electronics, all the factory electronics that turn on, like head units and the heater and whatnot, will pull current the opposite way and it'll show negative. Let's demonstrate. Here we have headlights, I have the heater on, all the various things in the vehicle, and we're showing a negative current flow. I'll turn the, head, the headlights off and now we have less negative current flow. So, when we start the engine, we're going to see this flip to positive as long as there is more of a current draw through that output side, through the battery. So, if we have a stereo system or a battery that needs charging, we're going to see this flip positive. It's important to know that alternators don't put out their full current at all times. Just because you have a 300 amp alternator does not mean it's going to always do 300 amps. It depends on the draw. If you put a fresh battery in or just took it off the charger, we will not see much current draw at all. In fact, when we first start the vehicle, we'll see a spike to charge up the batteries. And as the batteries charge, that number should drop so that when they're fully topped off, it should be close to zero. 
So I'm going to go ahead and start the engine and we're going to see that in real time. What this is great for is to see how your alternators perform with different heat conditions and uh, being run down from the batteries and demoing and playing the stereo all day with speed, RPM. Every alternator is going to act differently and the voltage here will not tell me that story, but real time current draw will. Let's go ahead and start the vehicle here. All right, we reached full charge on these batteries. It took eight minutes in real time. That time depends on the alternator and your batteries. Now, once we shut the car off, we'll see it bounce around a little bit. Again, this is the dome light and things on the vehicle that are just uh, connected on the other side on the chassis ground. That's perfectly normal. When everything turns out off, this has the time dome light. Uh, once that shuts off, you'll see it go to zero and everything will sit static. And there we go. We can shut it off and go home.